Here we are on our 13th episode of this Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer. Uh, I gained my level off screen, and uh, I picked Greater Spell Mantle. My ninth level wizard spells uh, I'm really just going to use for uh, quick and greater missile storms. I'm not going to actually bother trying to use the other spells. Too many of the ninth level spells have saving throws that really the spell depends on, like weird um, or uh, power word. Well, power word killed is not, but uh, well, the banshee does. So I I'm going to avoid them because I just don't want to have to rely on a random die roll as far as whether or not my spell does anything. It's really just too annoying. I mentioned there was one area that you can only get to by going through the Shadow World, and it's up in this northwest corner. Uh, unfortunately, there are some friends along the way that are going to cause some problems, specifically Shadow Umber Hulks. So I'm going to cast Lesser Mind Blank to... Uh, I'm not actually sure they're evil, um, so I don't know if protection from evil would protect you from them. But while we're here, I'm also going to summon up some minion. And get to it. And I'll kill one or two of them on screen, but I think you get the idea. They're they're not particularly dangerous as long as you uh, don't uh, get confused. And since I have mind blank up, I can't be confused. If my water elemental got confused, I might uh, bother to uh, just unsummon it, just to get rid of it. Um, notice that these Umberhulks, like just about everything in the Shadow Plane, have 50% uh, concealment, so trying to use touch attack spells on them just is not going to work. Which is the other reason I didn't pick up um, Meteor Swarm, even though it's not a bad spell. Grand scheme of things. It's just not as good as the, what you can do with level 9 meta magic. Anyway, there are a couple of these guys. I'll kill them off screen and be right back. Okay, well, I'm pretty much used all my spells. Fortunately, we're going back through the shadow portal to the real world, and so we'll be safe on the other side. Here, back in the real world, there are two things that, that show up. There's a pile of debris way over here, or a dirt mound, sorry, and a pile of debris down here. So I'm going to run off. More or less, you can just knock the pile of dirt around, and uh, it will give you an item. Oh, you actually have to break the pile of debris. It's just an item. It's just a destructible item. So I'll do that with a maximized flame arrow. Hopefully that's enough. If not, we'll add a little more. There we go. And we find a skeleton, which has this amulet. Now, this is another one of these unusual items um, that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use very much because I need the wisdom bonus from this talisman of pure good, or I will soon enough. Um, the spirit shaman is annoying because it requires wisdom to learn the spells, but it uses charisma to cast them. So I don't have quite enough wisdom, and I need that skill bonus to make sure I get all my spell slots. Anyway, this Period of the Lost Witch gives immunity to critical hits, spell resistance 30, casts Evasculate once a day, and has unlimited uses of Bestow Curse. This unlimited uses of Bestow Curse is fairly useless as a spell, but it will become important much later in the game. The other thing here is not important, and I'll just clean that up and be right back. We're done with that side of the Shadow Plane, so I'm going to come back to... Um, normal Mulsant here. I'm going to do some shopping and uh, well, let's just hand in the, the Retrieve Kaelin quest with Sousa here. And, you know, they essentially talk about current events. There's nothing really all that important. And, you know, you can be nice about it and gain alignment towards good. 
and more or less they promised to help us in return for us finding Kaylin, and Kaylin's not too happy with that because she doesn't want them getting killed. So, um, yeah, if you actually kill Kaylin when you uh, have that little encounter in the Death God's Vault, they will attack you here, and um, they are not weak. Let's just put it that way. Um, Souza, the uh, crow, has a very nice item, actually, and it's too bad I can't get it in this game because I'm being nice, um, but his item is a essentially a super version of the uh, Eldritch Chain in the original campaign in that it uh, has no spellcasting penalty and is armor. And anyway, I'm going to release them from their promise to make Kaelin happy with me, and, you know, that's really it. And, more or less, they they appear to be having a bit of a disagreement about uh, Kelimvor's instructions for what they're supposed to be doing. Um, some uh, Ephraim wants to follow Kaelin in this crusade she's on, and Sousa's saying, well, you know, that's kind of sacrilege and stuff. And Kaelin says, well, you know, buzz off, more or less. And Kaelin ta starts talking about the injustice of the gods. We'll get back to that in a second. Anyway, uh, Ephraim says, keep her safe and, uh, you know, have a hat. <laughs> and they go away. Now, the hat they give you, Ephraim's stag helm, is actually quite good. Um... Again, it gives another freedom of movement item, and it gives a four con bonus. I would use it, but it looks dumb, frankly. Uh, what's important to notice is that Kaylin does not actually use uh, on her model any headgear. So if you're actually using Kaylin, you can put it on her without you know having her look ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to do some shopping, and I'll meet you back at the sloop, which is, if you remember on the map, at the southwest corner. Back in the sloop, you get accosted by Two Penny Tam and <clears throat> his friend and uh, Clive the Dandy, and more or less they think Kalen is wonderful, and it's really kind of more or less they're trying to um, uh, seduce her. I don't know. It, Gan more or less tells him to buzz off. Not a useful. Guy. You you can actually talk to these two, and they're more or less. Uh, Mm, let's just say uh, two penny tarm. It two bit is the the expression. Uh, not very good actors, and they have a very not very good play. Um, Shelvin Arnum is here. Um, unfortunately, he's uh, not um, selling anything anymore, which is too bad. Oh well. We cleaned out these back rooms when we were fighting Fildren of the Eleven Chairs. Uh, and there's not anything new here in the chests, but there is something important, which is a shadow portal. So I'll see you on the other side of the shadow portal. We're back in Shadow Molson here. This portal it actually takes you outside the sloop. There is no shadow sloop, um, but it takes you to the far side of that, that locked gate. Uh, this is this gate, this inner gate. So over here is, you know, that house we were in and all that. As you walk up the wharf here, though, you'll see that there are some guys hanging out, including Ivan Borsk. Some, actually a couple of them are injured. I don't know why they're injured. I'm thinking it's actually because they met, someone messed up and uh, gave them hit point bonuses, but did not actually give them a way to restore those hit points. So, anyway. And uh, he says, you know, has Shelvedar gone and hired more lugs? I don't know, really look like a lug, but you know. And uh, more or less, he says, well, we, uh, we uh, are going to ambush you. And as you can see, there are two guys who just appeared behind me, <laughs> and there are Telflamar shadow masters and stuff. This is another, um, I would say, a hard fight. 
but it's not trivial. They really uh, enjoy dispelling. I'm going to cast uh, Ethereal Jaunt and just get started. And I'm going to cast some of my more major buffs to try and survive this. So that's Greater Invis, and I'm going to cast another Mirror Image. Now, they're all bunched up here, so I'm actually going to break out. Now, I mean, I'm still etherealized, so they can't see me, but this, uh, there's a Priest of Mask, there's a Wizard, there are two, well, three, essentially, with Ivan Borsk, thieves. Um, so let's get to work on them. I'm going to start with this priest by uh, just uh, forceful handing him. Get him out of the fight. The wizard I'm a little more... I'm not going to be able to kill quite as quickly because he's got a um, spell mantle up, as do I. Of course. So I am going to throw around a little bit of high power magic to try and just waste his uh, his spell mantle. As you can see, I'm getting sneak attacked a lot here. Um, oh, crap, they're using knockdown too. So get that up. Cast Dispel. Did he dispel anything? Doesn't look like he actually dispelled anything important. Again, with the wizard, we're just gonna throw. The other advantage to this Sunburst is, yeah, it does require a save, but it also blinds enemies, which is uh, fairly useful because, especially for melee enemies, they, if they don't know where you are, they just sort of sit around looking stupid, which is ideal, but at any rate, it gives you essentially 50% concealment. Shadows back up as a quicken spell. And was this gonna work? Hopefully. And then drink a potion of heal. Yep. I what I did there is I cast I recast uh, Ethereal Jaunt. So that they will uh they're actually trying to attack my the rest of my party members who are way over there. And we'll see if we can. we actually are winning this this time. Because of the sneak attacks, um, I would be in real trouble if I were trying to absorb this fight using a. Uh, using a spell like Premonition, because they do substantial damage. But fortunately, with uh, Mirror Image, it's an attack is an attack, and they don't attack that much. There's a letter here, which gives us a new quest. There's also this brown dragon shield, which is, uh, you know, a fairly decent tower shield. I can't use it. Um, tower shield proficiency is basically fighters only, unless you take it. 
Um, but the letter more or less says, hand me in Jashiva Whitefeather to uh, expose this nest of scum and vil- was it scum and villainy? I think that's what it is. Anyway, that's all there is on this side of the uh, Shadow Mulsant here. So, uh, the letter mentions Shelvet Arnum, so let's go have a chat with him. Short version of the letter is that Shelvet Arnum is a spy, and that Ivan Borsk, the guy we ran into uh, out on the Shadow Plane, was going to start extorting local merchants. We'll talk to Shelvedar about it next time, because we're out of time. So we'll see you for episode...